Good evening, UAW family. As you know, we have reached a historic tentative agreement at Ford. Our job is to rule the details out so you can make an informed decision. The membership is the highest authority in our union, and you will decide what happens next. There's a whole lot more in this highlighter and a whole lot more in this agreement. Right now, you can find the language online at uaw.org slash Ford2023. Both the highlighter and the actual contract language, the change pages, is available online. Go ahead and see for yourself. Before we get into all that, I need to say a few words. There was a time when it was hard to wear this wheel. Our union has been through some dark days, and like many of you, I walked a lonely path. What we have accomplished together has turned this wheel around. When I see that wheel, I no longer see a union on defense, in decline, or under threat. When I see that wheel, I see power. I see the future of the working class. I didn't do that. Chuck didn't do that. You, the membership, did that. The stand-up strike will go down in history as an inflection point for our union and for our movement. Just over seven weeks ago, I asked you all if you had faith. I asked you if you were ready to move mountains. The members of Michigan Assembly Local 900, Chicago Assembly Local 551, and Kentucky Truck Local 862 heard the call. In seven rounds of negotiations, I've never seen anything like the agreement we're here to present you tonight. These national negotiators who are with us here tonight are some of the toughest, smartest leaders I've ever met in my time in this union. With them at the table and with our members on the picket lines, we became a force to be reckoned with. The companies didn't see it coming. We fought like hell and we won like never before. Tonight, we're going to do our best to talk through some of the details of this tentative agreement. These are long documents with a lot of language. And as you know, it all comes down to the details. So we won't cover everything, but we want to go a little deeper on what we've won. Let's get into it. We went to each of the big three and proposed an expiration date of April 30th, 2028. We did this for several reasons. First, this allows us to strike on May Day or International Workers' Day. May Day was born out of an intense struggle by workers in the United States to win an eight-hour day. That's a struggle that is just as relevant today as it was in 1889. Even though May Day has its roots here in the United States, it is widely celebrated by workers all over the world. It's more than just a day of commemoration. It's a call to action. We invite unions around the country to align your contract expirations with our own so that together we can begin to flex our collective muscles. If we're going to truly take on the billionaire class and rebuild the economy, so that it starts to work for the benefit of the many and not the few, then it's important that we not only strike, but that we strike together. Secondly, we demanded a longer contract because one of our biggest goals coming out of this historic contract victory is to organize like we've never organized before. When we return to the bargaining table in 2028, it won't just be with the big three, but with a big five or big six. We have won a 25% increase to GWI. That's 11% immediately, 3% in October 2024, 3% in October 2025, 3% in October 2026, and 5% in October 2027. The top rate going off the most common production rate will go from $32.05 right now to $40.82 by the end of the contract. 
With our new COLA, we estimate the top rate at the end of the agreement will be up to $42.60 an hour. Our skilled trades after COLA will be up to $50.50 an hour. Our starting rate will go up from $18.04 right now to $30.35 after estimated COLA. That puts the starting rate above $30 and the top rate above $40. Skilled trades will be making more than $50 an hour by 2028. When we say this is a record contract, we mean it. UAW members at Ford will receive more in straight general wage increases over the next four and a half years than we have over the last 22 years combined. At ratification, Ford workers will receive an immediate 11% wage increase. That's almost equal to all the wage increases since 2007 combined. Another massive victory was in shortening the wage progression from eight years to three. This is back to what our union had in the 1990s. Let me explain how this works. If you have three or more years of seniority right now, you will go to top rate immediately upon ratification. If you have two years, you'll go to step three, which is 85% of the top rate. If you have one year in, you'll go to step two, which is 75% of the top rate. If you're on step one, you'll start at 70% of top rate. The punchline is that everyone will get at least an immediate 11% raise on ratification. Our members who aren't currently at top rate will get from 20 to 46% raises immediately, depending on what step you're currently on. And going forward, all new hires will be at top rate after three years. For our members at Sterling Axel and Rawsonville, the immediate raises are even more dramatic. We have killed the divisive wage tier and those members will go to the main production rate. Immediate raises at Sterling Axel in Rawsonville will range from 53 to 88 percent, depending on the rate. On top of that, upon ratification, members will receive a $5,000 lump sum ratification bonus. For the first time ever, this will include temporary workers as well. Let's talk about temps. Ending the abuse of temporary workers was a top goal for our national negotiators. Thanks to the power of the stand-up strike, we made historic gains for temporary workers. Most importantly, we've ended the system of perma temps. We raised the pay for all temporary workers from $16.67 to $21 an hour. Upon ratification, all active temps with 90 days of employment will be immediately converted to full-time status. Moving forward, all temps will be automatically converted after nine months of continuous employment, and those nine months count towards their progression. Thanks to the reduced progression, a temporary worker hired after ratification will start at $21 an hour and make over $40 an hour by the end of the agreement. That's a 145% wage increase and does not include the additional amount they will make thanks to cost of living allowance. And just like Chuck said, for the first time since profit sharing was first introduced in our union over 40 years ago, all temporary workers will receive profit sharing checks starting in 2024. Additionally, Temps are now eligible for paid bereavement leave and paid jury duty leave, and all temporary workers will also receive the $5,000 ratification bonus. In 2009, when the economy and the company were struggling, we suspended COLA, our cost of living adjustment. 14 years later, COLA still wasn't back. Some people said it never would be, but this strike made the impossible possible. Together, we won back COLA. We estimate that COLA will add more than $8,800 to everyone's paycheck over the life of the agreement. And at the end of the contract, 
Those COLA raises, minus five cents, will be folded into our base pay. It's a major victory that protects us from inflation now and keeps our base wage growing into the future. We've gone through the hourly raises that everyone's going to receive. Now we'll talk about the total economic gains that members will make over the life of the contract. Between wage increases, cost of living allowance, annual bonuses to retirees, and other economic gains, there is more value in gains for our members in each individual year of this agreement than the entirety of the 2019 agreement. This deal puts more money on the table than the 2019 agreement four times over. So when we say historic, we mean it. It starts with a ratification bonus of $5,000, an 11% wage increase, and it grows from there. <clears throat> For every member, the money will be significant. For many members, it will be life-changing. Over the next four and a half years, temporary workers who are converted to full-time will make up to an additional $193,300 more than they would have if their pay stayed stuck at their current rate. Because we ended the wage tier at Rawsonville and Sterling Axel, those workers will make up to an additional $195,800 over that same time period. Even our production workers, who are already at full rate, will still gain up to an additional $70,000 by the end of the contract. That's more than their annual salary under the previous contract. I want to stress that these numbers do not include profit sharing. Profit sharing will add even more gains to all auto workers. Ford came to the table with a concessionary profit sharing proposal. They wanted to cut our profit sharing. We shut that down pretty quick. But then we did them one better. We didn't just maintain our profit sharing, we enhanced it. We added Ford credit back in. If the new enhanced formula was in use last year, we would have received an additional $1,200 on our profit sharing checks. In 2007, the employers went all in on a divide and conquer strategy for the American auto worker. They introduced the two-tier system where some get a pension and post-retirement health care and some don't. We fought like hell to undo that damage of the past 15 years in this contract. And we made a lot of progress towards real retirement security for all our members. We have not yet ended the 2007 tier on retirement benefits, but we have won things we haven't seen in years, if ever, for all of our members and current retirees. We all deserve a dignified retirement. Our current retirees have finally won back annual bonuses with five payments of $500 each. That's the first time we've had annual bonuses for current retirees in 16 years. Our active members who have pensions are getting an increase in the multiplier for the first time since the 2003 contract. For active members currently building their pensions, we secured an immediate increase in the life income benefit of $5 per year of credited service for all future retirees. Our members who have 401k plans are getting a huge boost. With this agreement, Ford's employer contribution to your 401k will jump to 10%. Let's put that into perspective. If you're at top rate right now, Ford puts about $6,300 into your 401k each year. At the end of this agreement, when you're at top rate, Ford will put $11,000 into your 401k each year. That's a 72% increase. We are boosting the hell out of these 401ks and doing everything we can to secure our retirements. Everything we gain in this agreement is only as good as our job security. In this round of negotiations, we said we were going to make sure our jobs were protected in every way possible. We won a historic victory 
that for years thought was impossible. We want the right to strike over plant closures. That means if Ford starts closing a plant, we have the right to strike the entire company. That is our most powerful tool against these companies trying to kill our jobs and gut our communities. We also know that the electric vehicle transition is a pivotal moment for our union. We've said for months, we refuse to allow the EV transition to become a race to the bottom. Corporate America is not going to force us to choose between good jobs and green jobs. That's a false choice. So we've secured a pathway for thousands of EV and battery jobs to come under our master agreement at master agreement wages. The Marshall Battery Plant will have transfer rights for any surplus UAW members at Ford, and it will automatically come under the master agreement after a card check process. The Tennessee Electric Vehicle Center in Memphis will also have transfer rights for surplus UAW members at Ford, as well as transfer of operations opportunities and will come under the master agreement as soon as the majority of their workforce is made up of UAW members or after a card check process. The punchline is in the near future, we will likely have thousands of additional UAW members at the Marshall Battery Plant and the TEVC assembly plant under our master agreement. On product and investment, we won more than $8 billion in investments in our plants by the end of the agreement. From assembly to engine, from transmission and driveline to stamping, we have kept existing product in our plants and we have won new product that will keep members on the job. We want some big improvements in securing time off the job. We also ended the tiers on vacations in progression, workers with 20 years or more seniority will now get an extra 40 hours of vacation. In this new agreement, plants can only mandate one week of vacation to be used for plant shutdowns, down from two. That means you can use your sub pay and not burn an extra week of vacation time just because the company says so. We got two weeks paid parental leave for the first time in our history. We're parents too. We have families too. We also won the Juneteenth holiday, a day of historic importance for our country that our members deserve to commemorate. We walked away with more subcommittee agreements in this round of negotiations than at any time in the past few decades. In past negotiations, we left a lot of subcommittee demands on the table. That's why there are so many more gains in this highlighter and so many more gains in this agreement than any of the other contracts in recent memory. You can find the highlighter and contract language online at uaw.org Ford 2023. Please go look for yourself. Talk to your coworkers, talk to your family, and let's move forward together. So here's what happens next. This agreement now goes to regional meetings so your local leadership can get all the information they need on what's in the deal. That will help them answer your questions at local informational meetings to come later this week. After there's been time to debate and discuss, each UAW member at Ford will get to cast their vote for this deal at local union meetings. This contract demonstrates the incredible power that workers have when they are not afraid to use it. This is why your national negotiators, the UAW Ford National Council, Vice President Browning, and myself wholeheartedly endorse this record-breaking agreement. We went to Ford with the goal of not leaving a dime on the table, and we accomplished that. But the choice about what happens next is up to all of you. No matter what you decide, this contract remains a huge victory. For far too long, we were being left behind by an economy that only works for the billionaire class. In the billionaire's economy, working class communities continue to get left behind, plants continue to close, families continue to struggle, 
while the CEOs and the wealthy pocket every last dime. This contract is about more than just economic gains for auto workers. It's a turning point in the class war that's been raging in this country for the past 40 years. For too long, it's been one-sided and working class people have been left behind. That's why this contract is more than just a contract. It's a call to action to workers everywhere to organize and fight for a better life. The auto workers at Ford just won a major battle in the fight for a better world. Billionaires aren't going to save the American dream. Working class people are saving the American dream. The UAW is saving the American dream. And we are doing it together. Thank you and good night.